I'm Jim O'Neill. I am Head of Economics Research globally for Goldman Sachs and I am the uh, creator of the acronym BRICS. Amazed might be a slight exaggeration, but it has been pretty dramatic and it's changed the nature of how I function here at Goldman Sachs. Um, I used to be regarded as somebody that focused on currencies uh, as well as managing the department, but these days I'm known as Mr Bricks. When we first wrote about it, and particularly when we first looked at the 2050 potential, many people believed that we were being uh, very conceptual and it was uh, idiotically optimistic and some kind of fantasy for the future. Uh, but here we are, and many financial markets are completely dominated at the moment by what's going on in these countries. BRICS economies collectively are now 15% of global GDP, about half that of the US. And China, uh, interestingly, exactly in line with when we projected it could happen, is poised to overtake Germany to be the third largest economy in the world. I could go on and on. There's hundreds of examples. I would have to give very specific advice to, to each of them. In China, it would be uh, try to do more with your currency reform and accelerate the speed of renminbi appreciation. Uh, with India, if there was one single thing, it would be uh, try to boost uh, foreign direct investment to allow more investors in. Uh, and if it were Mr Putin in Russia, it would be try to make it easier for so many people in the West to understand you, because many people don't realise what a good story the Russian story in BRICS is. In some ways, the Brazilian uh, example at the moment is, is arguably the most interesting. There have been times in the past few years where journalists and some academics have written articles saying, why don't Goldman Sachs drop the B in BRICS? Uh, but in the past six months, there is growing evidence uh, that Brazilian economic growth is starting to accelerate significantly. There are many, many misunderstandings uh, about all the BRICS countries. Uh, Russia, uh, I think, often leads the way. Many Western people have a very Anglo-Saxon, Westernised view of how all these countries should behave and, in essence, should be like us. I think it's highly important uh, as part of the, the, the new integrated BRICS-influenced global economy that everybody understands that we are not only li not like each other, we don't need to be like each other. And one of the reasons why the world economy is doing better is because there are these big countries sustaining growth on their own basis. China, for example, to become the biggest economy by uh, another 20-odd years, only needs to grow on average by just over 5%, half what it's currently doing. Uh, India to become the, uh, the challenger to the US to become the second by 2040 only needs to grow by 6%. It's been growing recently between 8 and 9. And it's true for all of them. It's important that people realise uh, some slowing in growth might actually be helpful for the sustainability of it. Um, beyond that, I think that the, the biggest of many issues that I would highlight uh, in a discussion like this is that it's highly important that global policy-making organisations uh, start to give more role to these countries uh, within the global setting. I could give many examples, global warming being one that's now topical that wouldn't have been six years ago. Uh, given the, the, the demand for energy and growth of energy consumption in China and India in particular, there is absolutely no way we can get a solution to global warming without these two countries being involved. And to not have them as uh, equal members of things like the G7 and G8 is increasingly preposterous, in my opinion. People should not think of BRICS as traditional emerging markets. I, I deliberately thought of the word BRIC, meaning that these four countries are part of the BRIC of the modern world economy.